Hank is definitely uh, an excellent pixel artist. Really nice use again, like you could look at the back layers, they keep things uh, even more muted, lower contrast, excellent sense of depth. Oh yeah, before all the internet issues I started to mention, look at the shadows cast by the clouds down there, it's just one solid semi, uh, by solid I mean, it's just one semi-transparent value, it's not like a bunch of blendy, feathery stuff like modern 24-bit or even what they could have started doing in like the PlayStation 1 days. And yeah, Super Nintendo could do this game, but not widescreen, like this resolution right. is too high. And you know, it would definitely suffer slowdown if there were more things on screen. But just as far as number of on-screen colors and stuff like that, uh, and the amount of semi-transparency. Yeah, you would have to, the size of a lot of this art, you would yeah. it would take Shrink a big hit trying yeah. to put it on a legit 16-bit system because of the memory issues. But you right. know, you, you could probably make a decent port that played close, but yeah, it yeah. wouldn't look nearly as good. Yeah, so. the, the closest would be the arcade boards back in the day, like, you know, right, the yeah. Capcom, uh, later generation Capcom arcade boards and stuff like that. Yeah, this definitely would be a good game to have, like, in an arcade cabinet or something. Yeah. I think that would be... Yeah, speaking of... Uh, that style. Yeah, yeah speaking of that, I, I just found out before recording this video with you that the... Um, the, the guys that made this game and made uh, Xeno Crisis, they're uh, working on porting Xeno Crisis to the Neo Geo, which is really cool. Oh, nice. So I wonder if they're going to try to give this the same treatment. It would be interesting to see how well the Neo Geo can pull this game off. Uh, again, Probably it couldn't. Pretty close, I yeah. would say. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't be widescreen, and to my knowledge, the Neo Geo has no built in semi transparency. Um, Ironically, like, it's super powerful, but that's one feature that it just did not have. Yeah. Uh, whereas you know, the, the mega... Yep. Thing, uh, sorry. No, uh, no, go ahead. The widescreen thing, now that you mention it, does play a part because... Yep. People underestimate how big of a difference that makes when you scrunch it into 4x3 and, yep. and you've got the same size of, like, characters and stuff. Yeah. It, it can like, really get claustrophobic. difference, yeah. So at which point either the gameplay suffers or you make the decision, which uh, back then they also needed to make that decision to save memory, uh, like on a home console or something. But uh, you know, you, you either have to shrink all the sprites, which is going to lessen the visual quality, or you need to um, you know, compromise and let the gameplay less good because things are too claustrophobic. There were some fast-made ports of... Uh, console games to things like Game Boy Advance, where they just literally imported the Super Nintendo graphics, but the Super Nintendo had a higher resolution than whatever this console was I was thinking. So suddenly everything's too big on screen, right. yep. and uh, that really compromised gameplay a lot. Yeah, a port, a port of something like this to that system. Yeah, you probably would have to go, like, it would it would take a lot of time, because you would have to go through the process of taking all this art and making it slightly smaller. Yeah. And stuff like that, and then cleaning all that up, and yeah, that would be, that would be pretty rough. Although, uh, Hank's style it is would one that scale would be really well. better yeah. for scaling, yeah, weirdly enough, I think he, he probably has kept that in mind a lot, too, uh, you know, yeah. with his experience, so... Yeah, maybe, he would. Maybe that lends itself to why he developed this style. Who knows? Yeah, like, yeah, it could be. His story, but you know. he would be an ideal uh, artist for a Neo Geo game because of the way Neo Geo did scaling, uh, where you could see in the, some of the best later generation Neo Geo games that had the scaling, like Last Blade Two, the later Samurai Shodan games. They that's where that that's when that style of pixel art really became dominant yep. and beautiful the no outline thing where before then in the 8-bit days everything had a pitch black outline virtually and then they really started moving away from that and they you know once in 16-bit once they had more color indices to use like the average sprite was 15 colors and they had enough colors to go around where they would stroke uh, some parts of the sprite with just a darker version of the same color, like, you know, a darker skin tone for the outline of the skin and stuff like that. Uh, and then eventually you ended up with a style like Hank's style uh, that he tends to use where there's no outlines at all. It's just 
the kind of rendering of the thing and it's not rely, relying on the stroke of the thing at all. And uh, yeah, that's really ideal for things like Neo Geo that scale. I find too that just in terms of, you know, I have a lot more experience with environment art in yeah. the past than just, you know, doing things like Dame and Call and stuff. It typically works better for environments too. They oh, just yeah. Avoid strokes as much as possible. Yeah. And, you know, it may, you can, you know, the characters, that, that's going to depend on your game and the style you're going for. But yeah, it's. Yeah, this is like the sort of like the epitome version of that, of doing yep. that, you know, in the most stylish way without getting uh, too heavy into number of values and stuff like that. Like, yeah. It's very good at striking that balance between yeah. those two areas, you know. Yeah. And like you can see, he makes sure that the colors used, the contrast is higher for the characters and the colors used are more vibrant as well. So that, right. that's the other reason they show up really well. But that is another thing that, that works great in retro games and in the cartoon animation. That's why, you know, Disney uh, typically did the hand-painted, more oil-painting style environment art on t and with the cell-shaded, outlined, um, you know, animated stuff, the characters. And that's really going to ensure your environment can look really rich and lush, but still your characters and stuff are going to just really show beautifully against it right. and yep. they could have gone the same way with this games and it is much closer to the what we're doing in games like Damon Claw and Metro Siege where the environment art does not have the outlines but the characters have the outlines but more like the 16-bit style where it's not just a pure black outline everywhere yeah yeah I'm always of the mind that you know there are some things like, I'll, I'll bump into that, right, where it's like there's some things that feel like they need them and some things that don't. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't, but you don't, you kind of want that to be obvious for the things you're doing, and it needs to right. make sense for the art if you're yeah. going to mix things up like that. Uh, it's it's tough, because I, I've experimented so much over the years that yeah. it's, you land on a lot of different styles of things that work, and uh, right. you, you do end up developing your own. Know. Yeah. I also am mindful to keep it in tune with the game. You know, like Metro Siege doesn't look, at, look you know, uh, much the same as Damon Call for the reason that right. it's a different world and different style of game, you know? But right. uh, we, we still try to... These aren't hard rules, I guess. It's more stylistic yeah. choices. But, like, that's, yeah. a, that's the thing. Even within a game, even when you establish the kind of visual Bible, so to speak, of the style right. you're using... It's like Corey was saying, some th sometimes breaking that rule looks better in that case, and you can find a tasteful balance where you're using artistic license. That's what artistic license is all about, where you're, you're breaking that rule because you know it works better, it looks better, and in the case of gameplay design, you know, the, the most important thing in gameplay design, it's not just does any one item look good on its own, does it work well together and does it communicate well to the player? Can the player easily see what's going on, what's important, what's dangerous, what's not? And uh, yeah, so not only does Hank do beautiful things and beautiful individual things, but the balance and the communication with the player is uh, absolutely excellent. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Uh, I should say too, another thing that lends to the quality, visual quality of this game, is the smoothness of animation, which is another thing that an old console couldn't keep up with because of memory limitations back in the day. Right. Uh, but one thing I did notice is, even though there's like a lot of frames for the run and for the average move and for the explosions, uh, I noticed uh, at one point the enemies were standing completely still and they literally had no idle animation. Yep. So I would say it could be worth it for optimal visual quality if the AI of the enemies allows them to stand perfectly still. Even a few right. frame idle or breathe would really help make sure it doesn't look remotely buggy or cheap when they are standing completely still. Yeah, because they're so animated otherwise. Every, yeah, exactly. It's subtly animated too. So yeah. He, I, I well that you know the flying guy does because he's got to fly. Yeah, and, he's right. He's uh, got to stay in the air. Right. So yeah, that's and his I, walk that, basically. That's often a choice made. I think sometimes when people know that you're barely seeing people idle, and this yeah. is a pretty action game. But I, I agree. Like even something, even a few frames is enough. Yeah. You know, um, 
Yeah. And don't, don't get us wrong, there's always decisions to be made back in the day. Memory and cartridge size was a massive consideration, as was development time. You know, you were working on a budget. The game actually had to make money and not cost more to make the game than it was going to make you in sales. So that all makes perfect sense. Um, but my point is, they could have either tweaked the AI so the characters never stand completely still, or like even a three frame breathing loop cycle. Like right there, he was standing completely still before he was inactive. Right. And the guy in the tower is completely still unless he's throwing a rock. So. Um, yeah, you sort of expect with this level of animation, you sort of expect a little bit of breathing or yeah, exactly. mouth movement or something. Yeah, those guys have big mouths. Exactly. So you would think they would do something while they're standing yeah. still, I guess. But and like yeah. those up here animations are like probably. You know, get, getting close to 20 frames. Look at that. Right, Look at that yeah. smoke yeah. under that machine and how many frames. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. The next time we get to one of those troll generators, let me remind me I need to bring up a point about uh, memory optimization and just saving time. The design of that machine, or we could just edit in footage of it while I'm talking. But the design of that machine, because everything is rotating, you could see it was designed in a very symmetrical way where you don't need a ton of frames to create the illusion that it's just infinitely rotating because there's the same detail over and over again so it only has to use a few a handful of frames to get there it is so look at the spikes that are rotating on the top they needed more frames for the top bit uh, because there's only two spikes that go around but it is going around faster too so maybe not but you could see uh, those bottom spikes, you only need as much frames to get one spike over to the position of the other uh, spike. And it'll create the illusion that all of the spikes are uh, wrapping around infinitely. Oh, and uh, the other thing, like this tree has an idle pose, but it's breathing. <laughs> But, um, Tish, you see what I like? Imagine if that tree wasn't too animated, how much more dead the environment would seem. Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, it's great that they did that. Of course, there are way more enemies in a game than there are uh, distinct trees, so I could understand it could have been just a development time thing. If they decided to make the enemies have an idle animation, then all walking animations would need uh, enemies would need an idle animation. And even if it's only three frames, that's a lot of extra work. So they may have made that decision that it wasn't worth that time investment. So I don't know if you saw what just happened, but I forgot where the boss fight was. And literally, even though I destroyed the other enemies, I was like roaming around looking for somewhere to go on the bottom of the screen where all I had to do was scroll up a couple more pixels and it would auto-trigger the boss fight. Like, if you're going to do that, why not put the arrow there to let people know so they're not getting lost or wasting time? So I, I yeah, vote big time it, for arrows if you're making a game like this. Yeah, or even an update that adds that. You yeah, know, yeah. Like they, they could easily update the game and do that. Sorry, people, I don't usually suck this bad, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you do what you can in the moment while you're also uh, in a conversation. If you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games, please leave a like and subscribe. Also, if you want to support our projects, consider becoming a patron. The link's in the description, and we'll see you soon.